and closed. <clears throat> there was a nice thick drape and behind it, which, which was a shear or something like this one. And uh, exactly 8.30, I just point to Joe McDonald, our drummer, and he'd start his roll in a tom-tom. And he'd go into a beat, dum, 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 dum. This is totem pole, you know, dum, 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 dum. Now the trombones would come in, I had three trombones, and they had these plungers they would put in front of the bell, and they'd go, do wa do do wa do wa like that. So we have a date. We're going to the pole. Quotes. That was the pole. That was the key word. You said the pole. Everybody universally knew what we were talking about. So you get on a streetcar, and the girl's well dressed, beautifully attired, and the guy does the best he can. And you get on a subway, and the subway, and then you take this long streetcar up Commonwealth Avenue, and the stop was named Norumbega. You get off at Norumbega, and you trekked to the ticket office, and you went up this long walk. If it was raining or snowing out, so what? And then you got into the totem pole. There were dance halls, there were ballrooms, talking hierarchy now, and there was the totem pole. That was the jewel in the crown. That was so far above it. I don't think people considered it to be a dance hall. It was a ballroom, a very special place. Some of you probably danced to these a few years ago, and we welcome you back to the dance floor. For a cold, icy December, the dance floor is pretty warm this Sunday afternoon. 400 folks from Greater Boston have come to dance and remember to relive the totem pole, what Variety Magazine called the most beautiful dance hall in America. all our friends there. I and mean, if you had a date and your date took you to the totem pole, you felt like you had it made. Most of the people, rather than dancing, they'd stand around and just listen to Tommy Dorsey and Jimmy Dorsey, and it'll never be the same again. We met a middle totem pole when we were real young, you know? And I fell in love with her the first time that I saw her. And I said, please, say yes, and I love you, and I want to marry you. She, I kept refusing him. And she got bashful for a change. And she said, yes! People always find ways to, uh, to, to, to enjoy their, their life, or something to look forward to. You always knew the totem pole was stable. I always knew you could go there. Artie Shaw, Benny Goodman, Harry James, Woody Herman, the Dorsey Brothers, how can I resist saying it? They just don't make music like this anymore. This was music you could dance to. This was music that made the night go on forever. This was romance. They used to say, uh, kind of about our sweetest music this side of heaven. It was a very special, very special kind of place. And even all these years later, you get a warm glow when you think about it. 
The totem pole opened in 1930 in Newton, inside Norumbega Park. The pole, as it was called, had a few house rules. No stags, couples only, jacket and tie for the men, nylon stockings, no bobby socks for women. Absolutely no alcohol and no breaking, that's jitterbugging, was allowed. Admission was $1.75 a couple, except on New Year's Eve. That night, it went up to $3. It was exciting, especially for me from Dorchester, which was a good half hour away. And uh, to be able to go there, it was, it was just so beautiful. You thought you were in heaven, really, with the lights. And then you had these very deep, soft couches that you would sit on between the dancing. High sides around it. Yeah. And you'd sit in there and... Uh, Maybe sit. have a kiss, steal a little kiss, which we thought was so daring, you know. Oh, yes, the couches. I forgot to mention the famed totem pole couches. I remember them gray. I don't know, like a gray velvet plush, and you sank into them. And uh, it was very private when you sat in one of those. You could uh, uh, reserve a sofa for the evening. Uh, the cost uh, back in the late 30s, early, mid 40s, uh, was a dollar for a four-person sofa, one of the big divans, or 50 cents for a two-person love seat. We'd go after the Boston College football games every Saturday night. We'd be over at the totem pole, and they had the settees on, and it was banked, and it was very private, very cozy. The sofas were for sitting on, nothing else. There was no funny business going on. Yeah, believe it or not. It was the second day, and we went to the totem pole. I had met him, and I liked him, but we went there, we did a few dances, we sat down, he fell asleep. <laughs> On the diamond. <laughs> On the beautiful lounge that was there. And it took a lot of thinking whether to see this man again. <laughs> I did the third time and the fourth time, and we've been married 56 years. <laughs> uh, next to each sofa was a small table with a lamp on it, uh, with an on-off switch. That didn't work out particularly well because young couples sitting in the sofas and desiring a little privacy uh, would switch off the light. Uh, this caused problems, people walking up and down the aisles and tripping over coats and feet and whatever. So by the second year of the ballroom's existence, they replaced those uh, lamps with uh, new lamps, uh, all with a single on-off switch located in the spotlight booth. Well, that didn't work particularly well either because uh, it didn't take uh, Yankee ingenuity being what it is, it didn't take the youngsters long to realize they could unscrew the light bulb and create the same effect. So for most of the years of the ballroom's existence, uh, uh, each summer the management would hire a young man, and perhaps it was his first job at the age of 14 or 15, uh, whose only responsibility all night long was to go up and down those aisles screwing the light bulbs back in. But little did people know while they were snuggling in their sofa, the orchestra was battling bats. And I'd be playing a piano solo, and this is a true story, and many times a bat would come zoom, right, right in front of my eyes, and the guys in the band group, they'd make a sound effect, with like, whoa! <laughs> now the kids dancing out there, they don't know this is happening. I don't think I ever heard anyone mention the bats at the totem pole. <laughs> Today, the totem pole is a memory. Just like the old Howard, the Braves, Revere Beach, and the South End Jazz Clubs. On February the 8th, 1964, Bob Batchelder and his orchestra played their final song. There were no tears shed. It was just the end of a ball. Funny. No, there were no press there to cover it. We just, we just stopped playing. It ran down and nobody rewound it. That was the end of the totem pole. 